JavaScript is bad. We all know that. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. I mean, I'm a, a Java developer, and I actually do enjoy writing JavaScript, but just in small projects and, and nothing really um, that, that matters, because it's, it's a great language to explore stuff, but it's really bad when you want to write an application that you need to maintain for 10 years or more, that you have to develop in a large team with team members with different skill sets. Um, for these kinds of environments, JavaScript is really um, an awful choice. Now, I don't want to go on and rant about JavaScript because JavaScript is just too easy of a target for that. Um, so just Imagine your favorite JavaScript rant at this point, and we'll just move on and look at alternatives. Um, there are several alternatives available, maybe actually too many. Um, and every time when we start a new project, I'm always wondering which language we, sh we should actually use instead of JavaScript. And, and for that reason, I started to analyze the um, two most popular ones, in my opinion, TypeScript and CoffeeScript, and the most interesting one, ECMAScript 2015, because um, I think it has a bright future. Um, my name is Michael. I work for Canoe in Switzerland. Um, I'm a, a speaker, and sometimes I blog if I find the time. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, but mostly, I'm actually a, a UI developer by passion. I really love writing um, user interfaces. It's technically challenging because um, if you have a complex UI, it's really hard to get it right. But also, there are so many different um, aspects you have to know about. You have to know about graphical design. You have to know about usability. And you obviously also have to know about um, coding. So I just love doing UI development. No matter what technology, Polymer, Angular, uh, JavaFX, Swing, whatever, um, I just enjoy it. And Canoe is a good place for that because Canoe is also um, focused on providing superior user interfaces with all kinds of technologies. Now, in this talk, first I want to give a, a short introduction into um, the contenders, just a very brief overview of these languages. And then uh, we'll start the tournament. I selected five disciplines, maintainable code, JavaScript pitfalls, shortcuts, tooling, and community. And at the very end, we're going to declare a winner. So let's start with the um, contenders. First one, CoffeeScript. This one is pro um, the oldest. It, it's been around for quite a while. Um, and it's also um, the, the, the one which is less, or it looks very different than JavaScript. Um, there are lots of users. Here are two, for example. Dropbox uses CoffeeScript, and GitHub um, uses CoffeeScript. So there are large companies um, betting on CoffeeScript. And to understand what CoffeeScript is, I found this really um, interesting quote on, on the CoffeeScript website. So CoffeeScript is an attempt to expose the good parts of JavaScript in a simple way. Um, you really have to read it a couple of times, and you still wonder if this is actually a joke or if this is serious. But um, I think the authors actually mean it. Uh, when you look at JavaScript, there are many good parts. You have lots of power when you use it. Um, it's very flexible. It's, it's very small. There, there are many good parts. But there are so many pitfalls and so many um, things you can do wrong when you use JavaScript. It's really a pity. And CoffeeScript really tries to um, make the good parts easily approachable while um, trying to hide away the bad parts. Here's an example script um, calculating, calculating the factorial of a number. Um, so we have a method. This is how, uh, or how a function is defined. We have the parameter list and this uh, error, and here's the function body. There are two parameters. One is optional and has a default value, so if it's not set, uh, it will be set to one. And then here we have an if-else construct, which calculates um, the value based on n. Um, there are a number of things you notice immediately if you don't know CoffeeScript, um, but but, but you know JavaScript, one thing is there are no curly braces anywhere. Um, this is intended. CoffeeScript tries to uh, implement a Ruby-like syntax. 
Um, and also, there are no re there's no return statement here in this function. Um, in CoffeeScript, everything is an expression, or almost everything. So almost everything returns something, and it's not really needed to write a return statement up here. This will return whatever comes out of this um, if-else statement, or expression, actually, in this case. Um, and this is how we can call this uh, function, which is pass in one parameter here, because the other one is optional. Um, next contender is TypeScript. Um, TypeScript has been around for some time, not as long as CoffeeScript, but also um, a couple of years, which is pretty long for the web development world. Um, the most famous users probably are the Angular team, but in other users also um, JetBrains, according to the TypeScript website. So you can also see here that there are large companies um, using TypeScript. It's a serious language that um, you can consider for your project. Um, to understand what TypeScript is, I found this interesting quote. It really sums it up um, easily. So, TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript. There are two keywords here, <coughs> most important, which are most important, typed and superset. So one thing is TypeScript adds types to JavaScript. That's one of the main purposes of TypeScript. And the other one is um, it's a superset. So any kind of JavaScript code can be compiled with a, um, with a TypeScript compiler. Any JavaScript program that's correct is also a correct TypeScript program, which um, has an interesting consequence. It means that everything, everything that's added to TypeScript is actually optional. So if there are type definitions, as we can see in this example here, um, they are actually optional because you can remove them, then it would be a valid a JavaScript program, and it still compiles. So here we can see the same function with uh, TypeScript. It looks almost like JavaScript, except we have types here for the parameters and the, retime, or, uh, the return type of this function. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks very familiar. Here's a ternary expression which calculates the value um, pretty much straightforward. And the last contender is ECMAScript. Um, ECMAScript 2015 is extremely uh, new. It was just the specs were just finalized in uh, the summer this year. And therefore, there are no users yet. It's just too new. I mean, there are people exploring it. When you look at new um, projects at GitHub, they're often using ECMAScript 2015. But to my knowledge, there's nobody, um, no large project, no large company completely um, betting on ECM or using ECMAScript yet. But many are um, evaluating it and will switch to it probably very soon. Um, yeah, there's another quote. This is from um, the Babel website. They provide a compiler for JavaScript, uh, for ECMAScript 2015. So it takes ECMAScript 2015 code and compiles that to current JavaScript code so that you can use it in your browser. And it says, ECMAScript 2015 is a significant update to the language. And the first major update to the language since ECMAScript 5 was standardized in 2009. Um, so it's really a long time since the last version came out. It's um, six years now. And you notice immediately there are lots of changes, not a, lots of new things coming in ECMAScript 2015. Um, here we have a program uh, written in ECMAScript 2015. You don't really see much here because it is just, it looks like JavaScript. There's just one change. Um, compared to um, JavaScript 5, and that's the default parameter here, which has been added to ECMAScript. But we'll see later that ECMAScript 2015 actually adds lots of new features to JavaScript. So this was just um, a very rough and short overview of um, the three uh, languages. And now let's go into the details and check out um, how they compete with each other. Um, the first. Um, the first discipline is maintainable code. If you're working on a large project, which you want to uh, maintain for 
10 years or more, it's crucial that the code is maintainable. You need to be able to have uh, developers with very different skill sets, from junior developers to very senior developers, um, all the way up. They need to be able to work with the code and don't mess with it too much. Um, it's really important that the language allows you to write good code. One way or one important feature of, uh, of language for maintainable code is that you can split your code in different modules. JavaScript doesn't have this feature out of the box. When JavaScript was invented way, way back, I mean, we used it for doing things like writing small animations, some nice effects for the website. It was really was just very small, tiny scripts, and there was no need to maintain large, um, a large code base. It was never intended to be used to write large applications as we do today. There are solutions, obviously, because we needed solutions. Um, CommonJS and AMD are two possibilities, how you can structure your code and divide it into modules. Um, the problem with this kind of approach is that it's not really standard. And if you use one approach, it doesn't really work with the other one. UMD is is an effort trying to combine um, these different approaches, how you can um, divide your code into modules. Um, but it all already shows that this is the wrong approach. This should be supported by the language. And pretty much all other languages do have this kind of concept. So let's take a look at how these um, different languages deal with it. CoffeeScript doesn't support modules. There's no way how you can define modules within the language. They just um, forward you to the, to the libraries we just saw, CommonJS, um, AMD modules, or UMD modules. Um, TypeScript does support modules. So if you want to um, split your code in different files, um, let's say we have a greeter TS, one file here. And there we can write export the function. Um, to make it available to other uh, modules. And then in another um, file, we can import that greeter um, and then use it. So we have what is needed. It's actually not much. We just need to be able to define um, parts of the code that need to be um, isolated from the rest. We need to be able to define a clear interface, which we can with the, ex with the export keyword. And we need to be able to import these modules into other modules and use them there. So TypeScript does support that. ECMAScript is very similar. Um, the syntax is just... Um, Slightly different here, the import statement um, works a little different in ECMAScript 2015, um, but otherwise it works the same way. So um, we can check that as well. Object orientation is another important feature. Um, if you want to write a large application, you need to be able to structure it in some way, in some meaningful way. And it turns out, at least for now, that object -oriented, the object-oriented object approach is um, the easiest and most successful ones. It works for people with um, very different skill sets. And um, for large projects with um, large teams, object orientation is uh, a key feature. So the language we want to choose needs to support or object orientation. Um, in order so we can use it. It doesn't mean that everything we do needs to be done in an object-oriented way. There are also use cases and, and parts of the application we need to write where we can use uh, functional programming, for example. But to structure the all, all of overall um, application, um, being able to do it in an object-oriented way is definitely a plus. So let's take a look at the different languages, starting with CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript allows us to write classes. So here we have a class frog. It has a method say hello, which prints out quark. Um, then we have a class Kermit, which inherits from frog. So we have classes and we have inheritance. And we can override this method because uh, Kermit can speak and he says, he says hello. Um, we can create new instances of this class and we can call the method on say hello. So, First sight, on first sight, it seems CoffeeScript gives us what object oriented or gives us object orientation, and we can use it. But actually, when we look closer, we notice that it's not real um, object orientation. 
The problem is that CoffeeScript just builds on top of the prototyping system of JavaScript. Um, prototyping is a valid approach, but it's, um, it's people struggle with it. Um, so you usually, you usually want to use um, classes instead. But this um, prototype approach leaks through. And what you can do in your code at any point is you can access the prototype of Kermit, and then you can change the method. And when you call Kermit, say hello now, he will meow. And not only that, every new Kermit you create will say meow. And this can happen at any place within your application, not just in the class definition. So there are classes, but they're not really strictly enforced. So it's like half a point, maybe, for um, object orientation in CoffeeScript. There is some, but it's not strictly enforced. In a large project, you actually want to have as much help from the compiler as possible. OK, let's take a look at TypeScript. Um, TypeScript has classes, it has inheritance, and you can overwrite method, and it actually even has more. You can define interfaces, there are ge generics available, there are function types. So it's compared to the other one, uh, to the other um, languages, a very sophisticated type system. Now, I mean, it's really, it depends on um, the, the, uh, from wh where you're looking at. From other languages, looking at TypeScript, the, the type system is obviously a joke. But when you look from, uh, from the point of view of JavaScript, it's actually very sophisticated, and you can do pretty much anything you want. And even more importantly, you cannot circumvent the system. There's no way you can change this class at any point later. It will just not be allowed by the TypeScript compiler. So here we can say clearly, yes, um, TypeScript supports object orientation. Now ECMAScript um, looks almost the same. We have um, the classes, we have the methods, we have inheritance, and we can overwrite methods. Um, the syntax is the same, so on first sight it looks good again, but again, we can actually change the prototype, or we can access the prototype and change methods later. So it's the same problem as with CoffeeScript. We can use classes to simplify um, or creating objects and instances, but it's actually not strictly enforced, and you can mess with it if you want anywhere within your application. So again, it's um, half a point for ECMAScript. And the large part I see in uh, maintainable code are compile time checks. They're also very important um, for large projects because the sooner you can find a bug, the better. So if you can find it during compile time, that's the best thing you can, you, that can happen to you because most IDEs are actually able to show you compile time errors while you type. Um, if you find bugs in your automated tests, that's still okay. It's, no, obviously not as good as uh, during compile time, but it's still good. If your bugs will, will be found later in manual tests or even um, during production, that's obviously worse. So you want to push um, your bugs as to an as early state as possible, and you want to check um, your compile time as soon as possible um, when you do large projects. So let's see how the different um, languages behave here. Type checking in CoffeeScript is not supported. There are no types. In TypeScript, obviously, I mean, it's, give, it's getting its name from that. We have types, and they're enforced. Um, but what I actually like a lot about it is it's optional. Um, if you want, you can use this, or you can specify the um, string type for a variable, but you don't have to. So this is combining the best of both worlds. You have um, you have types from the like you have in stati statically type languages, but you don't have to specify them um, when it's obvious, like um, you do in dynamically uh, dynamically type languages. And um, the compiler checks it. So if you try to do something like this, this will give a compile time error, um, and you you cannot use the wrong types within your application if you specify them. ECMAScript doesn't have types. It just um, enhances JavaScript, but it doesn't add any types. 
Um, another very critical features in large application are constants. For some reason, they're missing in JavaScript. And CoffeeScript um, doesn't support them as well. But TypeScript actually does support uh, constants um, in, in the newer versions. So I think starting with TypeScript 1.5, the const keyword is supported, and you can define um, types, uh, you can define constants, so that this here will fail. This will give you a compile time error, and you will not be uh, you you are not able to change the value of a constant. ECMAScript, the same thing. I mean, it's this is coming from ECMAScript to TypeScript. Actually, um, you have constants; they are being checked during compilation and um, enforced. So we have constants here. Enums is an, another important feature in larger applications. You use them almost in every application I've worked with. We needed enums at some point. So um, they're not supported in JavaScript. And they're also not supported in CoffeeScript. TypeScript actually does have enums. So we can have defined an enum language, which has three values, CoffeeScript, TypeScript, and ECMAScript. And then we can uh, define a variable, which is of type language, and assign uh, one of the values of that language, or of that enum. ECMAScript doesn't have any enums. So um, let's wrap up the first discipline, maintainable code. On third place, we have CoffeeScript. It's really it's a very flexible syntax. It allows you to do many things, but it doesn't really help you to find your bugs early on. ECMAScript is slightly better. It's not as flexible, and it has more um, um, features and more checks during compile time. Um, but the clear winner is TypeScript. That's really the major strength of TypeScript. Um, it gives you, it allows you to write good maintainable code. So here we can see the, the overview. Um, TypeScript succeeded in all disciplines. ECMAScript missed some. It doesn't have a real object orientation. And um, it's also missing what, some of the features. CoffeeScript clearly um, doesn't have a focus in this area. OK, the next discipline are JavaScript pitfalls. JavaScript has many, um, let's call them features. Um, things that you get wrong easily, especially when you start with JavaScript, you will always fall, or pretty much everybody falls into these pitfalls at some points. And even experienced developers, even to them, it sometimes happens that they miss one of these pitfalls. Um, and a language that's supposed to help me and that's supposed to be better than JavaScript should help me to avoid these pitfalls. So I think. The most critical one, and the one that probably everybody working with JavaScript fell into, is the meaning of this. Um, what, where does this point to? And it really, de it really depends, as it uh, turns out. Here we have a JavaScript program. We have a class pick, which has um, a name, a method name. And then we have this method, which prints out, or it's supposed to print out this name, right? It points to this and um, prints out that name. We create an instance of that pig, and when we call it directly on the pig, it really prints out piggy. So far, no surprises. But the interesting thing is, if we assign this method to a function now, and then we call this function, it prints out undefined. Because what's happening now is um, that this method or this function um, has an execution context. If you call it like this, the execution context is actually the, the object that, uh, where the method is in. But if you use it on a function, the execution context is um, different. It's usually the global scope. And there, this under, uh, dot underscore name is not defined. So while this kind of setup is um, very um, unlikely, people don't use it very often. This one is actually critical. This happens all the time in all kinds of application I've seen. Um, if you use a method as an event handler, the method will be uh, called in a different 
execution context, and usually it's the execution context of the window. So what we would, we would try to do up here is we would call window dot underscore name, and that's undefined. And that's probably one of the the um, most uh, or one of the issues I think that a lot of people fall into all the time. So let's see how the different languages do. CoffeeScript, when we define a class, we do it like this. We define the, method, uh, the, the field here, and then we define the method. And if we use this operator here to define the method, then this uh, method gets bound to the object. I mean, we can do that here as well. That's actually the solution to solve this. Um, we need to bind this, um, this method to, um, to, the, to the execution context. But the code that is required from that, it's not really obvious. It's hard to read. And you can still forget it, even if you know that you have to do it. So, oops, CoffeeScript. Um, gives us this really simple syntax, and with that, um, show name is bound to that object, and when we call f down here, or when we use the method as an event handler, it will, um, this will actually point to the object. So this is solved by CoffeeScript. Um, TypeScript looks very similar. We define this class here. Um, show name it becomes this method, and when we use this operand here, the, lam the, uh, the, the lambda syntax, it gets bound to the object, and then when we call f down here, it prints the right name, and also if we use it as an event handler, it will print the right name. So TypeScript succeeds here as well. ECMAScript looks almost the same, and it also so um, solves the issue. So here we have the uh, lambda syntax, um, and it helps us to avoid this kind of uh, problem. We still have to remember to do it, but actually it's quite simple. If you use this expression every time when you de uh, declare a class, or when you define a class, um, you're, you're on the safe side, and you will never run into this issue again that this suddenly points to something else than you expected. Um, another pitfall is generating functions in loops. Let's look at an example. So here we have an array. Um, we, um, we run over loop, count from 0 to 4, and we create a function that prints the, um, the loop variable, and then we push that function onto the, uh, in, in the array. And when we call a uh, on the index 0, we would expect that this would print zero because that was the, um, the, the loop variable when we created it, but actually it prints five because um, i is not really fixed here, and as it moves on and it becomes five while we run through the loops, um, it will call, this will call the function with the i, which is five now. And again, the solution is quite simple. We have to bind, or we have to create a closure around it, which makes sure that the values get fixed. But again, you have to know it, you have to know the syntax, and you have to remember it. So let's see um, how the different languages help with this. CoffeeScript actually has a solution. When you use this um, construct, you call do with the parameters you want to fix and the um, function operand here, then it will generate this closure for you and if we call a um, for the, uh, with the index 0, it will actually print 0 at this point. I mean, you still have to remember it, um, you still have to do it, but it's a lot easier than the um, syntax you would have to use in plain JavaScript. TypeScript doesn't have a solution, ECMAScript doesn't have a solution as well. Another pitfall is the equals equals operand. Um, if we compare zero um, in quotes as a string with zero using the equals equals operand, this will return true. If we compare zero with the empty string, this will also return true. But if we compare zero in quotes as a string with the empty string, obviously this is not equal and return false. 
And this is actually quite shocking when you think about it. It's really, it means that the equals equals operand is not transitive, which is one of the basic principles of an equals operation. Uh, mathematics wouldn't work without transivi transivity, transitive, <laughs> whatever, um, at this point. <laughs> so, um, and there's a simple solution, never use equals equals, always use equals equals equals. The difference is this one does type conversion under the hood. So if you compare different types, there's some type conversion going on. And if you really want to understand what's going on here, you have to understand type conversion from JavaScript. And you don't really want to do that. So what you should do is use equals 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 or to uh, check for unequals. Um, it's uh, the, the um, exclamation mark equals equals because this one will not do the type conversion. So if you compare zero as a, as a string with zero as a number, this will be false. If you compare zero with an empty string, it will be false. And this one down here is false as well. So now we have real working mathematics. Quite simple, no problem actually. But people tend to forget, especially if you work with different languages. So for example, your Java is written in, uh, your server is written in Java and you have to implement some stuff there. Then you switch to JavaScript and you implement some stuff there. People forget all the time uh, not to use equals equals because it's just so common. You're just used to it. Um, so it would be nice if there's some help um, with this. CoffeeScript does have a solution here. In CoffeeScript, if you use equals equals, it will be translated to the, to the equals equals equals, and equals 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 doesn't even exist in CoffeeScript. So you can't even uh, mix these two things up. You always use what you're um, used to from other languages, and CoffeeScript will make sure that this um, is working correctly in JavaScript. TypeScript, um, no solution. ECMAScript, again, also no solution. Um, Another problem that you often have with JavaScript is checking for the, um, for the existence of an object. Um, especially people usually doing um, a lot of Java, when they want to check if a value is set, they just do this up here. But this is actually incorrect because X could also be undefined. And the right way to check if X is defined in any way is this long expression down here, right? You have to do type F of X. You have to compare that to a string. And uh, hopefully you don't misspell anything here. Um, and then you can also do the null check. So this is actually what's needed all the time when you want to check if a value is set. Again, this is hard. You get it wrong easily and you tend to forget. Um, easily. So let's see if these languages have a solution for that. And actually they do, I mean, at least CoffeeScript. There is the Elvis operator here. If you do a if x question mark, it is translated to exactly the string that we were uh, looking at before. So you can just write this and CoffeeScript makes sure that the, um, the existence is checked correctly. TypeScript um, and ECMAScript don't have any solution here. And to wrap it up, we have um, two languages on second place, actually, and CoffeeScript here is the clear winner. And uh, when you think about it, it's actually quite obvious because um, TypeScript and ECMAScript don't really want to improve or it's not their mission to improve the language and help you to avoid pitfalls. Um, if it just fits into the concepts, they, they provide such a, such a helper, but it's not um, the explicit stated goal. Unlike CoffeeScript, um, where the authors really try to improve your experience using JavaScript. Okay, the next point are shortcuts. So far, we just looked at how you can write uh, maintainable code, how you can write better, more correct code. But another um, uh, discipline you're always interested in when you want to evaluate the language is how efficient are you? Or, um, how much can the language help you to, write, um, to get to your goal faster? Um, at this point, I'm not going to compare these languages feature by feature that much anymore, only where it makes sense. Um, but I'll just present you different um, 
um, features these languages ha have, how they can help you writing better um, code in, in a shorter way. So one thing we already saw it in the very beginning is default parameters. That makes it a lot easier than um, what you usually do in JavaScript. Usually you would have to check if name is undefined here, and then you would set it. This makes it way easier to deal with um, default parameters. Um, default parameters are also supported by ECMAScript and TypeScript, and the syntax is uh, very much the same, because here this was introduced into ECMAScript, um, but gets, um, is migrated into TypeScript over time, like many other features. So we've seen it in the beginning. We have the default parameter. If name isn't set, we'll set it to, the, to DevOx. If it is set, like here, we would say hello world at this point. Um, the rest operand. Um, very often in JavaScript, you want to deal with uh, functions where the, the number of arguments isn't really clearly defined. You can do that in JavaScript. There's the arguments um, property within a function that you can use to extract what you want, but it's really kind of cumbersome and, and error-prone to use it. So what CoffeeScript introduced is um, the REST um, operand, and if you do that, then these uh, parameters that are passed in here are passed to you as a field. And then you can, for example, loop over that, um, calculate the, uh, the square of all the interests of all the um, entries and return an array of the, of the square. So it makes your code a lot easier to read and simpler. ECMAScript and TypeScript also support them. Um, the main difference is that the dots are um, behind, uh, behind um, the uh, parameter name in CoffeeScript, and they're in front of it for uh, ECMAScript and TypeScript. Those, this is actually doing the same thing as the CoffeeScript code before um, it creates an array, uh, loops over all the operands, and for each one of them, it calculates the um, square and pushes that to the, um, to the array and returns that array. Um, spread is another interesting feature. <clears throat> this is pretty much the opposite. Now we have a function here with a fixed number of parameters. But actually, in our application code, where we want to call this, this method, we have an array. So what we can do, we can, call the, um, uh, we can use the spread operand, and this will spread the array and put it, uh, or call the function with the different parameters. Um, again, you can do this certainly in JavaScript as well, but it's a lot more cumbersome and a lot more error prone. ECMAScript also supports um, sp uh, the spread operand at this point. And again, the main difference is actually that they are um, be uh, before the, the array here, while for CoffeeScript, they are after the parameter. TypeScript doesn't support this feature yet, but they plan to. Template strings, also an interesting feature, very useful. Um, if you have a string and you want, to, um, you want to calculate it dynamically, you can do something like this in CoffeeScript. Um, you have to use double quotes, and then you can use this, um, this hashtag uh, with the um, curly braces, and you can pass in a variable name. You can calculate an expression, and this will calculate the string. So at this point, it will print um, hello devox. Um, ECMAScript and TypeScript have it as well. The syntax is slightly different. You have to use backticks here, and then you have to use the dollar sign at this point, but otherwise it works exactly the same way. Um, and you really get the impression when you look at this that um, a lot of ECMAScript was inspired by the changes done in CoffeeScript. Destructuring assignments. Um, that's a really awesome feature, and it uh, helps you to avoid to write lots of code. What this does is, if we have a function, for example, that returns an array, we can use this kind of uh, syntax, and then the values of the array get assigned to the, uh, to the different variables here. So at this point, we call get names. 
this returns an array with uh, Snow and John. Snow will be, uh, or last name will be set to Snow and first name will be set to John. The same also works for objects. So here we return an object uh, which has three properties, title, last name, and first name. Um, and here we define which properties we actually want to set, and there's a match between um, the property name and the, um, and the variable name down here. And then again, last name will be Snow, first name will be John, when we call this. And what makes this really um, very interesting is that you can uh, mix those two uh, ways to call, uh, to define the structuring assignments, and you can dive very deep into the object hierarchy. It's actually something like, like a query language on object hierarchies. You can, um, if this is another object somewhere down here, you can specify it and say, I want actually this uh, particular property um, three, uh, three levels down in this object hierarchy, and I want to have it assigned to this particular value. So it makes it very easy um, to extract a um, number of um, variables from a complex object tree. Um, it's also available in ECMAScript and TypeScript. The syntax is slightly different. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's the same, except that we have to use the var keyword up here, which we usually don't, uh, we never use in CoffeeScript, actually, because in CoffeeScript it's um, added automatically. Um, same goes for the objects. Um, syntax is almost the same, except for the var keyword up here, uh, down here. Um, and we also have the destructuring assignment. And again, we can also use it uh, in a nested structure to dive really deep into this object hierarchy. Um, loop comprehension, that's an interesting feature that only CoffeeScript supports. If we have a loop, or if we run over a, a loop and we calculate a value, then cub cubic will be a new array which has all the different values here. So here we run from 0 to 3, calculate the uh, cubic value from that, and um, cubic will have these in an array. Um, it's also a good feature that helps you to write um, in uh, uh, often use functionality in sh uh, a short amount of code. Chain comparison, that's another feature that's only available in CoffeeScript. If you want to test a variable, again, an, a lower and an upper bound, you can do it like this in CoffeeScript. You write, if min is smaller than x, which is smaller than, and smaller than max, then alert, it fits. Um, you also have a lot more um, of variations on, Elv on the Elvis operator. So for example, this one sets x to default if x isn't set yet. So it checks if x is undefined or null, it will be set to default, otherwise it will keep its current value. Um, this one will check if y is set. Um, if it is, x will be set to the value of y, otherwise it will set the default values. Both are features that you use very often and makes it really convenient and, um, to write it like this. Street allows you, or I mean this, um, question mark dot operand um, allows you to dive into your object hierarchy and, and check for null in between. Usually you would have to check if person is null, if address is null, and then you go a step further and you can go to the street. And it's really, it makes very um, ugly code because you have to check each step very often. And this operand does that for you. If address is set, street will be set to street, otherwise it will be null. Notify is very similar. It checks if notify is set. If it's set, it will call it. If it's not set, it will just ignore this, um, this call. Array slicing, another interesting feature. So if we have an array, uh, we can slice it easily with this kind of approach. Um, it's kind of bad, in my opinion, that there's just that there are three dots to do an exclusive upper bound and two dots for an inclusive upper bound, um, but that's the way it, it is. It causes some pain sometimes, but in projects you should usually just define which of these two you want to use, and then you should just stick to this one. Um, array splicing, also um, an interesting feature to change arrays very quickly with um, 
a small amount of code. You can set um, the indexes of an array and um, set the value. So if you have numbers, which is an array from 0 to 4, and you call this, then you will replace these three ent entries with a minus 1. Um, all of these features I showed at the, at, the, at the end are not available in ECMAScript 2015. Now we come to one feature which is just available in ECMAScript and partially in TypeScript, and these are the enhanced object literals. Um, with the new object literals, you can actually set the prototype. That's a new feature in ECMAScript um, and very useful. This is a shortcut. If you want to set handler to a variable which is handler, you can just write that. Here's another shortcut. If you want to define a method in an object literal, um, you can use it like this. And now you actually have this super keyword available because you're able to define the prototype. You can also reference it here already. <coughs> And down here, you can see how um, um, that you can even define dynamic properties. So the property names are calculated on the fly while this object literal is supported. Um, this is fully supported in ECMAScript 2015, and it's partially uh, supported in TypeScript. So to wrap it up, um, TypeScript comes in last here. It's, um, it's adopting the changes ECMAScript brought about, but it's um, running behind, so it's on third place. ECMAScript comes in second, and CoffeeScript actually has the most features to make, it, um, to make you more efficient um, writing your code. OK, next discipline are tools. Um, probably one of the um, most important disciplines, because um, language can be nice and elegant and whatnot, but it doesn't really matter if you don't have tool support, at least in large projects. So let's take a look at that. ID support is great for all three languages. Um, I'm using IntelliJ. It supports all languages out of the box. Other IDEs either support these languages or they're working on a solution, and they will support them very soon. Build tools, um, just looking at Gulp and Grunt at this point. Um, there are plugins for all languages, and you can use them right away um, starting today with that. For ECMAScript, actually, by the way, um, I usually use Babel, which is um, probably the most famous and, and most used one to compile ECMAScript into current JavaScript code. But there are plugins for that available as well for Gulp and for Grunt. Debugging uh, works great. You just have to remember to call uh, uh, to create map files while you do the compilation. And if they are available in the browser, you can debug your source code. So you can really step through your CoffeeScript code, through your TypeScript code, or uh, through your ECMAScript code and see the changes there. You can set breakpoints. You see the variable, um, uh, the, the, um, the content of the variables that are um, being used at this point, and everything uh, that. All of that works for all three languages. Um, testing also works for all three languages out of the box. I usually use Mocker um, and Chai for the assertions. And uh, the Sinon or Sinon framework, not sure how it's actually pronounced, um, for mocking. And that works with all three languages um, right away. So uh, we have a very interesting result here. All languages come in first because all of them, or tool support for all three languages is just excellent. Community, that's another uh, important um, um, thing to consider because if you run into an issue you need to, and you need some help, you want to be able to find people who know the language and who can help you with the problem. Um, so community port support is something um, that you should consider when you look at language. So here are the Google Trends um, for, uh, at this point, I used uh, the name of the language plus the keyword tutorial um, to get an idea how many people are actually interested in a certain language and try to learn that language. Because if you just look for the language, it could mean all, all kinds of things, and the Google Trends aren't really expressing anything. But if you use the language with the keyword tutorial together, um, you get a good idea of how people are using um, or learning the language. And what we can see is um, CoffeeScript came in first. It has a, a very good adoption here. Um, TypeScript came later. 
At first, it didn't have the adoption, but here, all of a sudden, um, it just skyrocketed the, the, uh, um, the interest. And what's actually happening here is, this is the point when the Angular team announced that they are using TypeScript to implement Angular 2. That's when uh, TypeScript actually became more exciting for developers than CoffeeScript. Until then, it was really, I mean, there was, it was gaining traction, but it wasn't much, and this was the uh, decision point. Um, here I search for JavaScript 6 and the keyword tutorial because uh, if you use ECMAScript 2015 or other, any other combination, you don't really get any good results. And we can see, I mean, there is some interest, but it just started. I mean, the specs were, um, were finalized this summer, so interest is just starting for uh, this language. Stack Overflow, also an interesting um, um, website to take a look at. These are the number of questions that are tagged with a, div, uh, with a specific language. So we have almost 9,000 questions which are tagged with CoffeeScript. We have somewhere between five and 6,000 uh, questions for, um, uh, for TypeScript. And we just have 1,500 or something for questions which are tagged with the ECMAScript 2015. Um, obviously, you can see that CoffeeScript has been around uh, the longest, so there are the most questions being asked, answered. ECMAScript just became popular now, so it's, um, it's no wonder that um, the distribution looks like this at this point. And then the last um, statistics for getting an impression of what the community is like for these different languages is um, GitHub. GitHub gives you um, statistics about usages or how languages are used on GitHub. So this is the number of repositories that are in GitHub using CoffeeScript and the number of repositories using TypeScript. Um, at the end of 2014, I have to, uh, I have to say, there's no differentiation between different JavaScript versions, and that's why uh, ECMAScript 2015 is missing here. Um, as we can see, there are a lot of um, repositories are using CoffeeScript, but actually what's probably more important is how does this change over time? And here we have the statistics for that. Unfortunately, again, it's just until um, the end of 2014, so it's missing this huge spike when um, the Angular team announced that they're um, betting on TypeScript. But what we can see is that both actually, or actually CoffeeScript has had a very um, steady um, state of adoption. This is a logarithmic scale, so it's actually um, looking very nice here. TypeScript wasn't actually doing so well. It's here it's actually even going down. Um, it will be very interesting to see the numbers um, with uh, changes um, for this year, at the end of this year, when, when people became so excited about TypeScript and maybe even started new um, projects using TypeScript. So, when we look at um, the community adoption, we have ECMAScript coming in last. It's just a new language, so there is not much of a community yet. TypeScript comes in second. CoffeeScript um, comes in first. But actually, we have to take a look at it and see how it um, evolves over time. So let's see the results. Counting everything together, we have um, ECMAScript on third place, TypeScript on second place, CoffeeScript coming in on first place, which means uh, for all your... Um, oh, now the animation starts again. <laughs> for all your projects, you should use CoffeeScript. Um, no, that's certainly not the right um, approach. That's overly, overly simplified, especially when we look at the numbers. Um, all three languages were very close um, to each other until the very end um, when we looked at the community support. That's actually where uh, CoffeeScript um, created this gap and um, got in, in front of everybody else. But as we know, this, especially the community support, this can change very quickly. So one has to keep that in mind when looking at the numbers. And therefore, I tried to create um, kind of a decision um, flow chart, which you can see here. Um, for selecting a language. The first question you should ask yourself, in my opinion, is do you want to do rapid prototyping, which really means to build something fast and you throw it away 
at the end. So you have an idea for a new business, you want to develop something over the weekend or within a very few weeks, um, and you need to get the results quickly. In that case, CoffeeScript is your best choice. There's a huge community supporting it. When you have questions, you will get answers. Um, there's lots of help avoiding you doing the typical mistakes you would do with, um, with JavaScript. And um, it also has lots of nice little features to make you more efficient. Well, it's actually not that simple. You certainly have to evaluate, do you like the syntax? It is very different than, Coffee, uh, than, than JavaScript or Java or other languages like this. And if you say co the CoffeeScript syntax, it's okay-ish, then you should use CoffeeScript, in my opinion. But if you just hate it, um, don't bother with it. The next question you should ask is, what's more important for you? Type safety or the new features coming with ECMAScript 2015? There are a bunch of features um, that are um, just available in ECMAScript 2015 um, that are not supported in, in TypeScript yet. And depending on that choice, uh, you should either use ECMAScript 2015 or TypeScript. But actually, uh, which one you choose doesn't matter that much, in my opinion because it is the clear stated goal of TypeScript to integrate all the features that are new in ECMAScript 2015. So at some point, we're going to have something like TypeScript 2015, which means we have all the nice features of TypeScript, which we need to build large maintainable applications like a type system, um, uh, a real object-oriented um, implementation, which is strictly enforced by the compiler. We have all these features, plus we have the new features of um, ECMAScript 2015. So I think in the end, where you should actually go to is this TypeScript 2015. And which migration path you actually choose doesn't matter that much. You can um, start using the new features, if you prefer, write ECMAScript code, and then once the TypeScript compiler supports all the features you're using, you can just take your ECMAScript code and run the TypeScript compiler on that. Because, as mentioned in the beginning, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, and it will also be a superset of ECMAScript 2015. So you can just take your ECMAScript 2015 sources and run them to the TypeScript compiler and start to um, um, integrate new features um, from TypeScript. Or you go the other way, you start using TypeScript right now because you think um, types are more important, you want to focus on that. And over time, more and more features will be added with each version of TypeScript, and then you will have um, the same um, features available as well once we are done here. Um, so that was my conclusion. It really surprised me because I didn't like TypeScript very much before and I haven't really used it before. I have done lots of CoffeeScript things. I liked ECMAScript 2015. I never really liked TypeScript. But actually the conclusion for me was um, that this is the way to go for the future. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> so we have um, three minutes for questions. Does anybody have a question? Otherwise, I'll check the uh, website. OK. Um, sorry. Um, no, it just, oh, sorry, the question was if Angular 2 will just support TypeScript or also other languages. Um, the, t the decision, to my understanding, was that they just use TypeScript to implement Angular um, 2. But you can still use any kind of language that you would use in web development to use Angular 2 later. Any other question? There are no questions. Online. OK, thanks again for your attention. I'll be around, so if you have any questions later, just stop by and ask me.